Understanding what the Bible says about baptism is vital to our salvation. However, many sincere Christians are confused on this critical topic. This short video will reveal 10 essential facts about baptism. Hi, this is Dustin with Hope Through Prophecy. This channel helps you to learn more about Bible prophecy and be prepared for the soon return of Jesus. If you're new, please make sure you are subscribed with bell notifications turned on. To support this channel and help us to spread the gospel to the world, please consider becoming a Patreon for as little as $3 per month. You will have full access to regular uploads of candid behind the scenes footage and vlogging and even sneak previews of upcoming videos. If you're interested, just click in the link above. Many are desiring to give their lives fully to Jesus, but wonder if baptism is essential to salvation. What does baptism symbolize? What is the true biblical method of baptism? What must be done along with baptism? Does baptism involve joining a church? What does the Bible say about rebaptism? Now let's go right to the Bible to learn these 10 facts about baptism. Fact 1. There is only one form of true baptism. In modern Christianity, there seems to be a smorgasbord of options for baptism. Sprinkling, infant baptism, and yes, I've even heard of internet baptism. However, according to the Bible, how many true forms of baptism are there? One Lord, one faith, one baptism. God is particular in how we are to be baptized. There is only one form of true Bible baptism. It is not up to us to pick and choose which method of baptism best suits our taste. In fact, the Bible condemns those who follow man-made teachings over those of the Bible. In vain they worship me, teaching his doctrines the commandments of men. You will notice that following the teachings of men is vain or worthless in God's eyes. So, what is the one true method of baptism the Bible talks about? Fact 2. True baptism involves full submersion under water. Both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. In this account of the Ethiopian eunuch being baptized, you can see that he went down into the water, and then came up out of the water, full submersion. This is the only method of baptism described throughout the Bible. Archaeologists have discovered several old baptistries that existed in Bible times and in the first centuries of Christianity. Sure enough, these baptistries are deep enough to be filled with water and for people to be fully submerged. In fact, the word baptism comes from the Greek word baptismo, which literally means to immerse, plunge under, or submerge. In order for someone to be baptized, they must go fully under the water. Why does God require that we go fully under the water to be baptized? Fact 3. Baptism has profound symbolism. Listen to this powerful verse that shows us the true meaning of baptism. We were buried with Him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of His death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of His resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Baptism is actually compared to Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. As we go down under the water, it symbolizes burial and death to sin to the old way of life. As we rise up out of the water, it symbolizes a resurrection to our new life in Christ. The sacred ceremony of baptism is a reminder of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and the new life that we have in Him. Without full submersion under the water, this profound symbolism of baptism is lost. What was Jesus' example when it came to baptism? Fact 4. Jesus was baptized by going under the water. Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan and immediately coming up from the water. As you can see, 
Jesus came up from the water immediately after being baptized. This shows us that Jesus also participated in true Bible baptism by going all the way under the water. And we must not forget that Jesus is our example that we are called to follow. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. And if we are to follow in the steps of Jesus our example, we will be baptized. This brings us to our next fact. Fact 5. Baptism is necessary for salvation. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. But I want to be very clear. While the Bible teaches that baptism is necessary for salvation, it is not the actual act of baptism that saves us. The Bible tells us, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. But our works, or actions, do matter. They are the proof that our faith is real and genuine. Faith without works is dead. Baptism is an act of obedience to God. It is an outward sign of an inner commitment. So if we know that we should be baptized and refuse to do it, we are sinning. To him who knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. You see, there is only one thing that Jesus needs from us in order for us to be saved, our heart. If we love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor, then we will obey God's commandments. If we refuse to get baptized, then God does not truly have our hearts. We are in rebellion towards Him and will not be saved. Some may say, but what about the thief on the cross? He was not baptized, but he was saved. Yes, this is true. But the thief on the cross did not have the opportunity to be baptized. We do. Jesus knew that he had the thief's heart. If we give our heart to Jesus, our actions will follow. If we have the opportunity to be baptized, we should. Fact 6. Teaching goes along with baptism. The Bible clearly unites baptism with teaching. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. In some ways, baptism is like a wedding. Before getting married, it is important to get to know the person you are committing your life to. In the same way, it's important to know the basics about the Bible, Jesus, and the plan of salvation before you are baptized. Sometimes it might even be necessary to unlearn false teachings before being baptized. Before we unite ourselves with Christ, we should understand that He is our Creator, our Judge, our Lawgiver, our Savior, our Lord, our High Priest in the Heavenly Sanctuary, and our coming King. We don't have to know everything or be theologians before being baptized, but it's important that we have a clear understanding of the everlasting gospel before making this great decision for baptism. An excellent way for you to prepare for baptism and learn more about Bible prophecy in these last days is to watch the playlist Hope Through Prophecy by clicking the link on the card above. Is there anything else we must do before getting baptized? Fact 7. True repentance must come before baptism. As was mentioned before, baptism involves a dying to the old life of sin and choosing to live a new life of obedience to Christ. Therefore, one must repent of all their sins before being baptized. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And, according to the Bible, True repentance involves forsaking or turning from our sins. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Repentance and a commitment to live fully for God must come before baptism. Can I be baptized without joining a church? Fact 8. Baptism is connected with joining a church. Throughout Scripture, we see the importance of gathering together with other believers. In fact, the body of Christ 
is the church. He is the head of the body, the church. And God calls all of us to be part of the body. You were called in one body. And we become part of the body through baptism. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. You will notice that in the New Testament, new converts were added to the church. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Considering that baptism is connected with joining a church, which church should we be a part of? A church that teaches the truth. A church where you can say amen to the preacher. A church that follows all of the Bible. If you would like a link to a church that matches these descriptions, just text HOPE to 50597 and we will send one to you. Fact 9. There are times for rebaptism. In the Bible, we do see an example of rebaptism. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe in him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Here we can see that these individuals were rebaptized after learning a new doctrine. In the same way, when Christians learn of a major doctrine or teaching that they didn't previously understand, that is an acceptable reason to be rebaptized. Rebaptism is also appropriate for those who were baptized with an unbiblical method, as babies, or who have rebelled against God and made a major departure from the faith. If we refuse to get baptized, who are we really rejecting? Fact 10. If we refuse to get baptized, we are rejecting God. Listen to what the Bible says about the seriousness of baptism. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the will of God for themselves, not having been baptized by Him. So, if we refuse to get baptized, we are not rejecting man, but rejecting God. But why would you refuse to follow Jesus and be baptized? After all, if we love God, we will obey Him. I also want to talk briefly about a few things that baptism does not do. 1. Baptism may not make you feel better. Some people believe that they will feel some special euphoria or emotional high when they are baptized. This is not necessarily the case. As Christians, we must learn to live by faith and not be controlled by emotional highs and lows. 2. Baptism alone will not change your heart. It is an outward sign of an inner change. It is a public commitment and declaration that you have given your heart to Jesus. Without this conversion experience, a baptized person simply becomes a wet sinner. 3. As we mentioned before, baptism itself does not save you. We are saved by grace, through faith, and not works. While baptism is necessary, it does not guarantee us a free ticket to heaven. We must stay faithful in our walk with God. The Bible says, But he who endures to the end shall be saved. 4. Baptism does not take away temptation. On the contrary, it is quite possible that the devil will turn up the heat on you after you are baptized. You are now on his target list, and he will try to discourage you from maintaining your new commitments. But friend, don't fear. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And if you sin after being baptized, don't give up. Run to the arms of Jesus. My little children, these things I write to you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And God promises, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What about you, friend? Have you made the decision to join our Savior in the watery grave of baptism? Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. If you would like to find a true teaching church near you so that you can prepare for baptism, just text HOPE to 50597 
and we can help you. Also, to begin preparing for baptism, click the link above to watch a playlist of videos called Hope Through Prophecy. This will help you learn more about the Bible and be prepared for the end times. Whether you have been baptized yet or not, if you would like to make a decision to follow Jesus, whatever He asks of you, just write in the comment section below, I will follow thee, my Savior. Amen. Let us continue to grow closer to Jesus every day, friends. If this video has been helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. And make sure to check out this video about the second coming of Jesus. Remember, friend, keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith.